My name is Tim Wise. I'm the Director of Renewable Energy Policy at the Pembina Institute. I'm Paul Geimp and I'm a renewable energy advocate from California. And we're sitting here in front of City Hall in Edmonton, Alberta. And why is that, Tim? Uh, we're here because we partnered with a few other groups to bring Paul uh, Guy from California here to Alberta. Uh, he had all sorts of meetings across uh, the province. Uh, and we just finished a meeting today with the City of Edmonton's Renewable Energy Task Force. And, and Paul was here to talk about some of the success that he's had developing really progressive renewable energy policies uh, in, uh, in Canada. So Paul, you're here to talk about feed-in tariffs. What are they and why should we care about them? Uh, feed-in tariffs is actually a very simple idea. It means uh, simply that you will be paid for the electricity from your solar panel or your wind turbine. You'll be paid a fair price for a long period of time, a sufficiently high price so that you'll be able to recoup your capital costs and earn a reasonable profit. And that's all a feed-in tariff is. So why would we want more renewable energy? We want renewable, more renewable energy for many reasons, but a very powerful idea is to protect us from the inflation in fossil fuel prices that we expect to see in the years to come, and also to protect our societies from the volatility in fossil fuel prices. There are a number of people who believe that the current financial crisis was triggered by the rapidly escalating cost of fossil fuels and we need to protect our societies from the rising price of fossil fuels and one way we can do that is hedging our prices of, for electricity by building as much renewable energy as quickly as we can. Doesn't it take like a long time to build renewable energy? How long does it take? No, it's actually much easier than most people think. An example I've been using here in Alberta is this very small corner of northern Germany near the Danish border represents three-tenths of the land area of Alberta where they have developed 560 megawatts of wind energy that they own, the farmers and the communities own in that small corner of Germany and they produce as much electricity as all the wind energy in the entire province of Alberta in the last 20 years and they did that within the last 10 years and they did it and they own it themselves. That's the scale at which we can develop renewable energy. When you look at a place like Germany, for example, within 10 years, they've created the generation of, they've installed as many wind turbines capable of producing almost 40 billion kilowatt hours of electricity, almost two thirds the electricity consumed in the province of Alberta, and they did that within 10 years. So, and that was using feed-in tariffs? Yes, uh, the success of Europe uh, in developing renewable energy is entirely built on feed-in tariffs. And in fact, if you look around the world today, every place that's developing renewable energy rapidly is using feed-in tariffs. So a feed-in tariff is essentially a, a price, a guaranteed price for a certain kind of energy. Is that right? That's right. We say we want solar energy. We will pray, pay this price for solar energy if you install a solar panel on your rooftop uh, we will pay you this amount for your electricity for 20 years, and that's all it is. It's nothing more complicated than that. So wouldn't a, a good conservative say that that's just a big fat subsidy? It's not a subsidy at all, because we are paying for a product. We're paying for the electricity. It's not an incentive. It doesn't come from the taxpayers. It comes from the consumers of electricity. And in fact, this is how we pay for electricity today. It's no different. When we have electricity from a coal-fired power plant or a nuclear power plant, we pay what it costs to produce the electricity. In the case of a solar panel or a windmill, we say, well, it'll cost so much to get the electricity from the solar panel or the windmill, and we will pay that to you, the, the generator, whether it's a homeowner or a farmer or a rancher here in Alberta. So how successful is that strategy financially for jurisdictions? Well, it's, uh, it enables everyone in a society, regardless of race, class, or economic status, to participate in the renewable energy revolution from homeowner to farmer to rancher to small business entrepreneur. Everybody can participate in a renewable energy revolution. Feed-in tariffs liberate us uh, and give us an opportunity to earn uh, money, earn profit from developing renewable energy that we need for us today and also we need for the future for our children and our grandchildren. 
So how does this work for a, a jurisdiction the size of a city, for example? Edmonton's a city of 800,000, a million people. How does this work in, our, in the context of a city? Actually, cities are where the concept of feed-in tariffs first started, particularly the modern version of feed-in tariffs, what I call advanced renewable tariffs, began at the cities. It was cities that uh, uh, were the first to uh, create this revolution in renewable energy development. It began in Germany, swept across southern Germany, and the politicians in Bonn finally saw where where the parade was leading and decided to jump out in front, but it was cities that powered this renewable energy development. So in a case like Edmonton or Calgary or Red Deer or Pincher Creek, they can create uh, tariffs to pay for renewable energy development from homes and and uh, residents and businesses within the city. They can pay for that electricity within the city. And it's done in, uh, even in the United States today. So, Paul, sometimes you hear as uh, resistance to renewable energy that it's very variable, it's flaky, and, and isn't there some maximum uh, amount of renewable energy you can deploy? Well, you know, when I first started this uh, in this business uh, 20, 30 years ago, we would used to say that uh, wind energy, we could actually uh, install maybe 20% of our electricity generation from wind energy without any change to the system. Today we say we can probably add uh, wind generation to the system up to about 50 percent without substantially changing the electricity distribution system we already have. And when we are talking about renewable energy, we're talking about a basket of resources, not just windmills, not just solar panels, but also including those firm baseload sources of generation like biomass plants, biogas plants, geothermal, that run all the time and can balance out the variability in the wind or in, in the sun and the solar energy we receive from the sun. So Tim Weiss, you brought uh, Paul Geip here from California to talk about uh, renewable energy and feed-in tariffs. How'd it go? Where, where did he go and how did it go? Uh, it, was a, it was a busy trip <laughs> and, and I think it was busy for two reasons. One was we, there was all sorts of people that were interested in, in talking to Paul, but really there's a groundswell, I think, of interest, not, not only in renewables, but also in the concept of, of participatory renewables that, that people can, can be a part of. And I, th I think there were people coming to us from, from all over uh, that wanted to, to talk about the idea, debate the idea, see how we can make this fit in the Alberta, in the Alberta lens, in the Alberta context. And I think it was, overall, it was, it was a tiring trip, but it was a really successful one. And I, hope, I think it sort of laid the groundwork for future discussions in the province. So, Paul Geip, how optimistic are you that a place like Alberta can dive into this sort of thing? Actually, I'm quite impressed with Alberta, and if uh, uh, Tim wants me to come back, I'll say I'll be right here because I think there's real opportunity in Alberta, real opportunity in this part of Canada because the kind of enthusiasm and excitement I've seen from the people I've talked to here in Alberta, I think this is a place that could do it. Uh, it may take some time. Um, but there is enough interest, enough will, and excitement from the grassroots that Alberta could be the second province to do this in Canada. And they could do it a lot quicker than most people would, would, would think. It's pretty interesting the level of interest being shown, you know, with task forces being formed in Edmonton and Red Deer making motions, their city council. That, it's pretty exciting, actually. Well, it is. It's, it's happening here much, much faster than I've seen it happen in other jurisdictions. And so it's exciting for me. I came here. I had very low expectations. I've heard all the myths about Alberta. Uh, but what I find here is a spirit and uh, uh, an entrepreneurial drive um, that can make something happen a lot quicker than most people think, including uh, political leaders here in Alberta as well. Well, thank you very much for your time, uh, Paul Geip and Tim Weiss. Thank you.